in the final video of chapter 7, where we will wrap up our discussion of sampling distributions. Now, in this video, we're going to explore the sampling distribution of the differences of sample means. So we're going to be taking a look at taking two random samples from separate populations uh, and calculating sample means from both of them and basically comparing them with each other. We want to see, is there really a difference? And this kind of has some same similar vibes to when we looked at these types of problems for proportions, but these will now be for mean problems. So the problem we're going to explore says a potato chip manufacturer buys potatoes from two different suppliers. The weights of potatoes from farm A are approximately normal with a mean of 175 grams and a standard deviation of 25 grams. The weights of potatoes from farm B are approximately normal with a mean of 180 grams and a standard deviation of 30 grams. When, ship when shipments arrive at the factory, Inspectors randomly select a sample of 30 potatoes from each farm and weigh them. They are surprised when the average weight of the potatoes in the sample from farm A is higher than the average weight of the potatoes in the sample from farm B. Now, why would they be surprised? Well, up here we were told uh, about the population mean for farm A that those potatoes on average weigh 175 grams and B's mean is 180. So they're surprised when the farm A's potatoes are a higher weight than farm B because that doesn't normally happen, right? So that's what we're going to be trying to figure out is what is the probability uh, that the inspectors would witness such an event? Is it an abnormal probability or is it something that could happen naturally? And it's just a matter of sampling variability that we saw here. So we're initially going to kind of look at these two separate sampling distributions. And so we know the shape, the center, and the spread of uh, weights from farm A. We know the shape, the center, and the spread uh, based on farm B. Um, and, you know, both of them are approximately normal. So notice over here I said because the population is normal, then so is the sampling distribution. But then for farm B, I said since the sample size is large enough, the sampling distribution is approximately normal due to the central limit theorem. And you might be wondering, why didn't I just say this also over here? Because I said over here that farm B, well, it's approximately normal to begin with. So I just wanted to point out that if the population distribution is approximately normal, you can have two choices. As long as your sample size is big enough, you could just claim that since the population is normal, then so is the sampling distribution, regardless of our sample size being 30. Um, or if you want to use the central limit theorem, you can. You can have two choices in this matter. Now we have our means of each sampling distribution. We have our standard deviations for each sampling distribution. I think it's safe to assume that there are more than 300 potatoes in each of these two farms if they're supplying potatoes to a potato chip factory. Now, what we're really going to be looking at for the sampling distribution of the difference in the sample mean weights of farm A and farm B, because again, we're, we're wanting to compare the mean weights that we got from our two random samples. So we are going to want to be subtracting uh, the values that we are getting from farm A and farm B. So this is very similar to something that we talked about back in chapter 6. And this is very similar to what we talked about for sampling distributions of the difference in sample proportions as well. That when we want to subtract these, a lot of those um, adding and subtracting of random variables by combining them, those rules are still going to apply for means as they did for proportions. So if I took farm A's sampling distribution shape and I subtract away farm B's shape, well, if I have a normal distribution minus a normal distribution, it is still approximately normal. So it is key that both of these sampling distributions are approximately normal because if one of them is not, then we cannot guarantee that the difference in the sampling distribution will be approximately normal. Now for the center, this is just like what we did back in chapter six. We went, when we wanted to combine these random variables, we just subtracted the individual means from each other. So if we take 175 mean for farm A and 180 for the mean of farm B, on average, there is a negative five gram difference. 
Now, this might scare some people to say that the mean weight is negative 5 grams. And so how we could avoid getting a negative mean is just merely by subtracting the other way. So I'm doing farm A minus farm B, but if you did farm B minus farm A, well, you would have an approximately normal minus approximately normal. It would still be approximately normal. But instead of a negative 5 average difference, you would get a positive 5. And so really, we can get the same exact answer that we're going to derive later if you did A minus B versus B minus A. It really doesn't matter. Now, the spread... When we looked at the individual standard deviations, we just said you cannot subtract these from each other. We needed to square the individual standard deviations. We added them together, and then we had to square root. Now, everything that I just showed you here is not really exactly what you're going to end up doing in the end. I'm going to share with you some simpler formulas that we can use, but this was really good review from Chapter 6 when we combined random variables together. These same rules apply in chapter seven. Now, my sampling distribution of the difference in mean weights of farm A and farm B, and remember I'm doing A minus B, uh, we know that the shape is approximately normal, we know the mean is negative five grams, and we know the standard deviation is 7.129. So what is the probability that the mean weight from farm A exceeds the mean weight from farm B? Because that's what we saw happen, right? So the probability that the mean weight from A exceeds the mean weight from B, well, I can't exactly answer this question the way that it's written because everything up here, the shape, the center, and the spread has been all about A minus B. So if you notice my subscripts that I have for my mean and my standard deviation, that's what I need to see. I need to see X bar sub A minus X bar sub B. And I don't have that in my probability statement. So again, this is something similar to something that we did back in chapter six. We're gonna to need to subtract over the sample mean of the potatoes from farm B over to the sample mean weight from A. So that in the end, we're calculating the probability that the mean weight of A minus the mean weight of B should be greater than zero. What is the probability that the difference is greater than zero? So now, if I want to use my picture here, I can start to come up with uh, a nice picture that says, well, the mean in the middle was at negative five. So where would I find zero at? Well, it's going to be to the right of the mean. How far away? Well, the standard deviation is a little over seven. So the difference between the mean at negative five and where I want to be at zero isn't even a full standard deviation away. So realistically, I don't know, maybe it's right here-ish. And we'll say this is where I would find a difference in the sample mean weights to be exactly zero. And which way do I want a shade of zero? Well, I want a shade greater than. So if I look at this right end here, there's my nice picture that goes along with what I want to calculate. And so we get to use normal CDF to calculate this probability. And from our picture, we can see the lower bound is zero. The upper bound would be infinity. The mean is negative five, and the standard deviation is 7.129. So now I need my calculator to go to normal CDF, zero comma nine 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 comma negative five for the mean. Now, if you did B minus A, here you would get to say positive five instead, but the lower bound and the upper bound would not be zero and infinity if you switched it around. Just keep that in mind. Let's see, standard deviation, and then I get an answer of 0.2415. So I got about a 24 to 25% chance that the mean weight of potatoes from farm A would actually be more than the mean weight of potatoes from farm B. So is it really that abnormal of an event for the inspectors to see? And I would say, no, it's really not that abnormal. Remember, if something happens less than 5% of the time, 
and it actually occurs. We should be statistically surprised that that event happened. But since this probability was between 24 and 25 percent, we shouldn't be statistically surprised to see such an event occur. Now, I'm going to wrap up the shape center spread. What, how do I figure out the shape center spread of a sampling distribution of the difference in sample means? Well, the shape is going to be approximately normal if either of the two apply. And this is where I kind of got to use both of these earlier, but I didn't necessarily have to use uh, both of them to prove that the shape was approximately normal. So when you look at your first population distribution, um, if it's approximately normal, then you get to say, hey, since the population was approximately normal, the sampling distribution is approximately normal. But if the population shape is not normal or it's not known, then you have to try to use the central limit theorem to get there. Now, I would say probably in most cases, either you're going to use this first one uh, for both of your distributions. Uh, you know, they'll say both population distributions are approximately normal, just like it was in this potato example. Or they won't even mention what the population shape is because most of the times you're not going to know what the population shape is. They're just going to say you took a large enough sample size in both samples. And so typically you're going to be using the central limit theorem as long as, again, you have that large enough sample size of 30 or more. Now, the center, what we ended up doing was we subtracted the individual means from our two sampling distributions. And the means of our sampling distributions were really based on the population means. So out of everything, this is the main thing I would consider to write down for the formula for the center of the sampling distribution of the difference in sample means. It's really just the difference in the population means. And finally, the spread of the sampling distribution for the difference in sample means. Now, really what I showed you was that I took the sampling distributions uh, of each farm and I squared them, added them together, and then square rooted. Now, really the formula that you'll be using, but you could use this formula if you so desire to, but this would be the main thing that's really happening here, is really we're going to take the uh, individual standard deviations for each of our two populations, square them, and divide them by the sample sizes. Add that result together, and then square root the entire thing. You will also need to verify that 10% rule. Is the population at least 10 times the sample size? You will have to check it twice, once for each population. So a problem to leave you with. Is it more expensive to live in California or Florida? Monthly living expenses for Californians are slightly skewed right with a mean of $10,650 and a standard deviation of $2,875. Monthly living expenses for Floridians, yes, Floridians, are approximately normal, with a mean of $8,972 and a standard deviation of $3,054. Describe the sampling distribution for the difference in monthly expenses between California and Florida based on random samples of size 50 each. So all I want you to do in this problem is tell me what is the shape, the center, and the spread for the difference. Now, can you do California minus Florida? Sure. Could you do Florida minus California? Absolutely. So technically there are two possible answers you could give me here. Now I would bet most of you are going to look at those means and go, which way would I really want to subtract these means? And I would bet most of you are going to do California minus Florida so that you end up with a positive mean. But it is not wrong to do Florida minus California. You can get a negative mean difference. That is acceptable. All right, so good luck with this one. And we will talk about this the next day in class. And then we will do a follow-up question. We will answer a probability question based on this.